We are live. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. We're going to drink a fine whiskey and smoke a really fine cigar. It is time for happy hour. It's the Man Cave Happy Hour, Whiskey, Cigar, Spirits, the stories that go along with it. I'm Jamie Flanagan. I am Matt Fox. And Matthew. Yes, sir. It is, uh, it, it's time for a happy hour. We're in the Palacious Podcast Detroit Northville Damn word Studios. Again. <laughs> you change it. It was palatial. Now it's palacious. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just make words up. I'm oh. an English teacher. It's what I do. Yeah, it is what you do. <laughs> I just make crap up. Heareth cometh, Jameth. Flanagan. That's it. So, uh, we have we are uh, we have a, a party in, in store. Look at this right there. I'm trying to pull the the image up. Oh, yep, there it is. Yeah, look at that. A little bottle of uh, something special. Yeah, Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest. It's the 18. 18- I love the 1856. I love the history behind this bottle. But so the thing is, right? Because uh, it's it's uh, we didn't pick this. No, it was Lady's Choice. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, I spend way too much time on the internet, <laughs> as most English teachers do. Yeah, yeah you know, that's so why I was supposed to be teaching my kids. I'm screwing around on on the line, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I'm I belong to a lot of bourbon clubs and a lot of bourbon groups on the yeah, face space, as as most teachers are. And yeah, yeah and and so I, I I came across this other podcast. I, I'm and I'm a, I'm a podcast junkie too. Yes. Not only do I host three. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to like 40 others. You hey, know? you know what? You got to spread spread the wealth. Spread and the a wealth. lot of po- a lot of bourbon podcasts cuz uh, uh, the reason we started the man cave is cuz we wanted to learn. Yes. And so I still listen to other podcasts cuz I try to learn stuff. Yeah. You brought me along for this journey called the Man Cave Happy Hour and I cannot thank you for the last almost 3 years. That's been it's over 3 years. My yeah. liver is <laughs> really upset with you. But Stop okay. complaining, liver. <laughs> But uh, ran into a, a, another podcast, yes. uh, and and I was like, "Oh, this looks intriguing." Yeah, and uh, it's uh, bourbon and blondes. Bourbon and blondes. Yeah, and with us joining us, joining the party, Abby and Elena are going to join the party today. Welcome <laughs> to the man cave. Hi, Abby, hi. 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 <laughs> We're happy to be yeah. in the man cave. Yeah, yeah. It's, the podcast. it's right on the poster. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> it's a podcast for everyone. It yeah. says it right there. You know, it's in print. You're so. not legit until you have a douche board. A, a, a douche board. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, is that what they we, call it? It is because we have the pop up banner. We'll like because we'll do a lot of these out and about. We'll go to a happy hour. We'll go to a bar. We'll go to a cigar bar, and, yeah. and we talk to the owners and distributors and and learn right. And and mm-hmm. and so we're like we're set, we'll set up, and I'm like, should we like be total douchebags and just put up our sign? <laughs> so and it's like mm-hmm. so it's like that's that's where that comes from. It, like, it does spark conversation. Folks will walk up and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" It's a table with microphones on it and laptops <laughs> and a big sign. It's like we're doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can't just sit here and talk to another human being. I got to record it. <laughs> and, right? and you guys, you, the two of you kind of do the same where you'll actually go and sit down with folks and get to understand what's going on with them. Yeah. Uh, so what is your, what is bourbon and blondes about? What do you guys do? Oh gosh. Um, what's our, our elevator pitch? <laughs> <laughs> so, 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> so we'll, we'll start from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, so four years ago. Tell yeah. me about your childhood. <laughs> So, um, we, that you do not have enough time for that. Oh, <laughs> we have what? 55 minutes left. That, right, actually right, is, yeah. that actually is normally in an interview. That is my first question yes. is oh it, it kind of breaks the ice. And wow, we did, I, we got like I said, there's another podcast called, uh, animal talk. Yes. And we were interviewing this author and he was like, what? No. Why would I do that? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much my reaction. We but said, it's, it's that part of my life. It, it 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 gets things going, but all right. So yeah. Yeah. tell us about Purpose and Blondes. Yes. So uh, we met about oh my gosh, it's going to be about two years ago now. I can't Is believe it? two or tw- three. Tw- uh, yeah, I think about two. I I don't know. Twenty twenty is like a wash, so it could be two or three. <laughs> like I'm not sure. The last eight months don't count. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but we were, uh, we were at a salsa club and, um, she came with a mutual friend. It was a friend's birth, a uh, friend of mine's birthday. And we like, yeah, we were just out there dancing, having a blast. I was like, who is this chick? And then we ended up having, um, a drink at, at Brennan's, um, at a local bar in St. Louis, um, whiskey bar. And yeah, whiskey and cigar bar. Mm -hmm. And, um, we just like started chatting and I, it may have been about another month there uh we were at that that's right down the street from where abby is and we were like oh we should start our own podcast we're hilarious yeah, like thinking <laughs> way too highly of ourselves <laughs> like does anyone actually need to listen to us probably not but here we are with a podcast in its second season so right there right it is and, yeah and so we just i i had looked up is bourbon and blondes we're like we, abby came up with the name she's like bourbon and blondes i was like that's a great idea i was like that's got to be taken the internet has is somebody you know, already owns that that has to right be. <laughs> and, so you and, the domain <laughs> yes yeah and then yeah. And we just and we went from there and i remember our first episode we're like we'll just spitball and like see and how it goes and see what it, it was like two and a half hours long and i was like <laughs> oh, absolutely no. not yeah we didn't ever no one is hearing that. this ever again like we're just no. nope we're just gonna pretend this first episode didn't happen and do a new one <laughs> yeah um but much. now We've grown. We're doing interviews with some people in the industry. We love it. Um, one of our favorite guests is up there in the Detroit area. She's uh, Maker's Mark Rep, Greta Harper. She's great. And then when everyone started doing the whole don't leave your house ever again thing, yeah. we started doing virtual tastings. We partnered up with a local company and they started delivering the tasting kits to people here and, you know, podcast tastings and I, whatever I comes between. I, I, I saw that, that you guys do virtual tastings. And I'm like, this is, is really, really interesting because Elena, you, part of your deal is you're a, a party planner. Yeah. Um, and one of, my, uh, one of my many jobs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> four jobs, lazy girl, only four jobs. I know. I know, right? <laughs> what about that? I'm the, pilot, I'm the co-pilot. I'm the steward. <laughs> <laughs> the old player like it. Anyway, but, uh, so I, I thought that was interesting. And then I saw that you guys did uh, tasting. So I, I'm going to have you guys, when we get to the uncle nearest, I'm going to have you guys, if you're cool with it, walk us through as if, if we were a couple of schmoes that uh, you were doing a tasting for. Um, so I think that, I think that'll be fun, but uh, how, how goes work as an event planner? Cause Matt and I um, are, are kindred spirits as far as that goes as well, because uh, we both DJ weddings and parties as uh, you know, oh, do you? Matt's oh, a yeah. banker during oh. the day. Yeah. My nine um, to five is a banker. And then, you know, the, when things were actually normal, yeah. you know, it was from gosh, March all the way through November. Oh, it yeah. was a wedding every single yeah, yeah. Or wedding or event every weekend. Yeah, and it's like, no. I probably got 17 gigs canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, and yeah. it's like it, it's that's all my fun money. <laughs> it's like oh, now yeah. I gotta like I gotta like you know buy regular gas so I can funnel cash towards that's my bourbon fund. <laughs> yeah. You start asking me for advice, and that's when it gets scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, it's been yeah. crazy. How's business been for you? Well, so I'll start off by saying if um, you're a DJ, me and Abby have been getting on to the boat of creating a playlist for the bourbons we drink. And yeah. so uh, we released one. Uh, what was it that we uh, we. Oh, gosh. What bourbon it was, was it that we. Um, it was Lee Sinclair out of. Yes, Spirit thank of you. Life. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so we, we're like getting into like doing playlists now for, um, for, for bourbons. I'm a, I'm a huge music person, so I can appreciate that, but By yeah, no means so can we DJ? On no, no, we can put songs on a list, but <laughs> right. right. Spot no, my, my, um, cousin's son, I, I was in uh, California for his, like, uh, I think it was his 11th birthday and he calls me DJ a dog. And, um, <laughs> my, 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 my DJing skills w was literally a Spotify list. And I was like, he's like, you're the best. I was like, yeah, this is Thank so, you. such yeah, skill set. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the event industry is, um, been hit hard. Um, so that's my, my part-time, um, gig. So I work with a local company, um, big blue spark. So it's Ooh. my friends, uh, Chris and Kevin, they, they own big blue spark. Uh, we work predominantly with nonprofits. Um, so galas and fundraisers and, and whatnot. We did have a wedding this year over the summer. Um, and you know, it's just been, 
it's it's tough like not doing in person events. So prior to that, prior to doing this, I was a wedding photographer for four years. Oh so I I I mean like I know I've been in the business for now five years, and it's just crazy um, to see how much it's changed. We've been able to transition. Um, obviously, you can't do this with the wedding side of things, but we've been able to transition to using studio. So there's a local studio called Spot Sp Studio, who's amazing, and they kind of have like a set setup like um, you would see like for news stations or for shows and stuff. And so we still do galas, fundraisers, but it's, you know, all virtual. So it's, wow. That's great. it's been, yeah, it's, it's been interesting. It's just like tough to see, I think from the wedding industry side, being in it for so long, seeing, you know, all these people, you know, brides and grooms or th that, that plan for so long. And mm -hmm. it's such, you know, such a, a personal event to them and having to, reinvent the wheel now and be yeah. creative so and it's yeah. it's tough for the vendors too i feel mm -hmm. for you know yeah i just uh i got a message earlier today it's like june june 12th just got just booked a gig and i'm like i wonder if it'll actually happen right you know? i know so yeah. kind of crazy. Uh, it, but so I, I love the fact you guys are reinventing things and doing things a little different and so you guys are doing these virtual tastings which i think is is pretty amazing so you've partnered with a, a, a local distributor and and so if someone like goes to your website and and wants to do a virtual tasting with you guys mm -hmm. um what are they going to get where's it coming from and, and how's that go down Oh gosh, it's we've been doing them um, probably every month or so. We're kind of taking a break, you know, with holiday season. Everyone's kind of a little strapped in time availability. But what we do is we will partner with um, it's a company called STL Barkeep and they do cocktail events. So we just talk with them. We build out five one ounce pours. Typically, it's all under one umbrella. So we did a Bell Mead tasting and we did five different pours of the Bell Mead and we did Maker's Mark one time. Um, so it's open to the public. We do it about once a month and they get the five one ounce pours with a cocktail and the cocktail is using one of the pours. Um, we've been doing actually some for like corporate events yeah. and that's been exciting too. So I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty much uh, like whatever you want it to be, we can make it happen. Corporate um, events, two drink minimum. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's get back to the madman style. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> Don't have to get an Uber home now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you're already, you're already, uh, you're already parked. So, uh, when you like just introduce the, uh, do you have someone there from like makers? Do you have a rep there that's helping mm -hmm. out with the information? Yeah. So Elaine and I will typically lead the tasting and mm -hmm. manage like the run of show, as they say, and then we'll have a brand rep or, you know anyone who's a, information. an expert who has <laughs> the stories and the anecdotes like we did a four roses one and dan gartner jumped on with Ooh. makers mark we had greta harper um with beam suntory we had their national brand rep adam harris um it was you know yeah that's exciting they, that's fun. It's, it's fun to talk energy. to those people yeah they're so passionate about the spirits and mm -hmm. and they're usually a wealth of information because we actually matt and i we cheated we've we've tried the uh, the uncle nearest before well, we're going back to a, a whiskey event that there were probably what 20 some distributors there yeah. and uncle nearest was one of them so our palate yeah. was trash by the time we got to uncle yeah. nearest yeah. <laughs> so it, it wasn't an honest taste are they al like, alphabetical and that's why or oh yeah, I don't, yeah i'm <laughs> whoever, not even sure whoever would come into the corner and talk to there us, was really. scotch in the mix there was all kinds oh, of crazy yeah, you're bouncing but around the detroit let rep lazar sat down with us and uh went through it and we were trying to figure out some stuff about uh uncle nearest matt what do you know about uncle nearest what have we what have we dug up for today well, uncle nearest uh jamie what's the mash bill on uncle nearest uh we don't know <laughs> <laughs> because it's undisclosed. Yeah. And I went back and I listened <laughs> yeah. to the interview with Lazar. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I asked him, oh, so what's the mash bill? And then he says, like, ooh, he jiggled his keys and went corn and then started talking <laughs> about something else. And I'm like, you, I, and I was like, damn, he got away without me getting an answer to that question. So we yeah. found it on their Trade website, secret. it says it's undisclosed. So. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a, it's actually aged whiskeys between eight and 14 years old. Uh, which makes up the 1856 of the uncle nearest at this point. So I, I'm excited to try it again. So this so is a, get whiskey. a better feel for it. It's a Tennessee whiskey. It's not a bourbon. It doesn't say bourbon. Did on I here. say, did I right. say bourbon? No, no, oh, okay. I, I, I may have. Oh no, it's, it's, it's whiskey. Yeah. It's with a, a Y. 
Mm-hmm. That's what just was it's the, oh, it's the, the age old oh, fight, oh, guys. Is Tennessee whiskey mm-hmm. a bourbon or is it a whiskey? Yeah. Because <laughs> how they make it technically yeah. could be qualified as bourbon. Right. But it's cool. they call it Tennessee it's, whiskey. Yep. It mm-hmm. kind of goes through the same process from my understanding. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so do you guys know anything about Uncle Nearest? Did you had you uh, found anything out about the bottles? Yes. Um. So, <laughs> I'm the I research- love the Uncle Nearest story personally. Yeah, I do I like too. About it. So, so for anyone like listening, if you go on the website and they have a video of um an individual telling the story in the old house mm-hmm. where uh, in in Lynchburg. It is like I I sent it to Abby earlier and I was like, I've got chills listening to this story. Mm -hmm. Like it was it's it's so awesome. So I wasn't aware I I was like kind of familiar, but I started digging in about the sugar maple uh, charcoal filter, which makes it different. It um, is called the Lincoln County process. So that's a little bit different than what you see in typical Kentucky bourbon. Mm -hmm. Um, And in the video, they say that the process is thought to be brought back from West Africa. Um, it was used to uh, filter their water in, in West Africa, which I, I thought was interesting. And then also um, they go into detail, like obviously the years, the whiskey's not, you know, from 1876. But, you know, Uncle Nearest is, it's just like, is it thought to be a recipe from that time? And um, Uncle Nearest, uh, worked on a farm i think the last name was like call call farm and then a am i just gonna go into the full story because i like <laughs> i feel like <laughs> where you're going I, I, yeah, I love where you're going right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm enamored with the story too yes. yeah and so there, there was a kid um that came onto the farm and wanted to learn and they they eventually introduced him to um his name's nathan um nearest green or they called him uncle nearest mm-hmm. and um he was distilling the whiskey at the time and the boy and um uncle nearest became friends and the boy went out and started selling the whiskey and i found out that i didn't realize that um slavery was abolished abolished 154 years ago two days ago so december oh. 6th wow. oh wow um okay. yeah um and so once slavery was abolished um, he began working directly with, um, uncle nearest and, um, he, the boy is who we know today as Jack Daniels. That's yeah. So, it, it's yeah. A, it's amazing that, and they were working and uncle nearest continued and Jack, they continued their partnership mm-hmm. and relationship. Mm-hmm. And it, it's funny. They stood side by side as equals, which is yeah. Uh, just for like mm-hmm. <laughs> at, right at right at right when slavery ended yeah. for that to be a, a reality. It's like, and we can't even yeah. get it right now. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. The nearest yeah. we're getting it right. You know, 150 years ago. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's just, it's, uh, it's cool. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And some of we've connected with some of his descendants. They live in the St. Louis area and oh. we were talking to him and, when uh, Fawn came up with this whole brand idea and bringing back the story of Uncle Nearest and bottling his story and things like that, she went out and found all of his descendants and they have played a major role in helping identify the whiskey that they sell and building like their limited release every year, 1820. It is created and picked by someone in the family. Mm-hmm. So it's very much like still the family process and, the old house is there and they're building the distillery around it, things like that. So it's, it's a very historical distillery and, you know, trying to keep the memory alive. And I think it's amazing. I love it. And yeah. it's, uh, this, this is a product of Tennessee, yes. which is uh, always good to know. You got to check your label, read your labels. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know where it's mm-hmm. coming from. So it is, uh, it is a, a product of Tennessee and, and they, they're doing it. They're doing it right. Um, so do you guys, which bottle do you guys have? Because we have the 1856. Same. Is that Same. You guys, okay, right on. Same. Because yes. uh, it was a little higher proof. And I, I then the uh, the other one, I was like, I'm going to, let's go with a little higher proof. Let's just go all <laughs> in, yeah. right? Yeah. Gonna, all right, it's my favorite thing here. So uh, we'll <laughs> nice. <laughs> so w- I was curious. Was the allocation easy for you guys to get a hold of where it's you're at? It's readily available in the Detroit area, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty available where, where we are mm-hmm. at as well. So I was kind of curious. Oof. So no, actually, I'm on bourbon.com. 
yeah. uh, breakingbourbon.com, I should yeah. say, and uh, Fawn mm-hmm. Weaver, the, the the founder of Nearest Uncle Nearest and the and the whiskey itself. She was saying, but in that West Africa, they were using charcoal to purify their food and to filter oh. their water. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you have these guys coming here and distilling whiskey and tasting and going, man, this is some harsh stuff. And and looking at it, they go, I bet we can use our filter and our water on this. <laughs> So not wild, and that's where that's where they believe the process for Uncle Nearest came from, or for in general, and what they mm-hmm. came up with. So, love the history behind this bourbon, and just you know yeah. how, how far back. Sorry, whiskey, and how far back it goes. Thanks, Jamie. You're welcome. <laughs> Editing. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get in post. We'll get. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. No, I think I've probably I think I've said bourbon several times okay. today as well. So no, I'm just okay. I'm calling you, you know. out trying to remind myself. <laughs> You know? It's all it's all part of the process. I say I like to say that English is my second language usually on most <laughs> days. So I'm good if I can form a sentence. And after a few drinks, usually I can. So it's okay. <laughs> Let's also say that she's not fluent in any other language. Ah. Yeah. So she's when you guys not good uh, in English. <laughs> um, so what do you guys what do you guys smell in, in it? What do you guys do you uh you guys you guys are both neat there, I see. So are, yes. so are we. Um yeah. What are you smelling? I, this one always for me is it's got a really great color. That's always the first thing I notice. If it's got that rich, like amber E mm-hmm. color, mm-hmm. I, that's, I love that. Um, I get a lot of molasses caramely notes on the nose. Yeah, oh. I get, I get caramel as well. And almost like a toasted, like a um, tap, um, what is that? Peanut nut? Milk? Not pe. I was gonna say the the thing that my grandma used to cook. That was peanut br- or something you type of brittle. Mm-hmm. But it's like um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> out of all things. Actually, when I when I sniff it and then I and I continue to smell as I pull the the glass away from my nose. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little. I feel, feels like a farm. It's like I feel like huh. I'm in a barn. Okay, you're getting almost some, like a some, like an earthy like an earthy. I don't. I almost want to say hay. Okay. Interesting. To it. Some Maybe. people, there are notes out there where people do get like a grassier, earthy nose on this. So mm-hmm. you got Maybe it. that. Good. Maybe that's one of the ingredients that he didn't want to mention in, yeah. Yeah. in the mash bill. What mash bill? <laughs> what grains do you use? Well, grass hey. and hay. <laughs> so I was, yeah. So it's 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 sweet. I'm getting a, a, a lot of sweet yeah. that that caramel that you expect from a, a, a whiskey from that region, right? And mm-hmm. uh, from the fruit, that's where the sweetness is coming from. Yeah, the fruit that they put yeah. in there. All right, I'm diving in. I'm Dive. going in. Do Ladies, it. Do it. Cheers. 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 Here we go. It's so good. This is delicious. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this actually a lot would... of apple on the on the palate here. I get maple. Um, okay. It's. It's something I would definitely suggest to someone who's a begin like a beginner into a high proof because the sweetness yeah. is not it's not it like helps with the proof and it's not a mm-hmm. kick in the teeth to me as much. No. It's not very it's not as corn forward as some whiskeys can be. Um, yeah. But you know, it does have a sweetness to it um as it sits mm-hmm. on the back of your palate. And as it just as it's uh coating my throat, it's just it's that nice warm feel. As it just lingers there for a little while. Oh, so good. it does. It is. It is. Yeah. That the ma- the maple is coming through for me. Is it really not strong? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it's the, maple, there. the maple is is it it, it stays on the, the the tip of my tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it staying. I'm looking for an age statement. I'm not catching an age statement. Uh, let's see. It's uh, well, a between between eight and fourteen years. Yeah. Between yeah, I think they blend years. you. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's is a that lot a of commitment of the house on the co- on the label on the cover on is that a picture of the, the dj on the cover <laughs> yeah, of, the, <laughs> on the, of the lp there is that the house you're talking about on the label Are the lyrics Probably. Yep. yeah where are the lyrics come yeah. on where's the magic oh, he's singing to me <laughs> 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 yeah that house that's uh that that's on the uh bottle itself uh, is that uh the estate that, yeah that's one is yeah it? yeah um it, there's a there's a link floating out there on facebook i think i post it in the comments so i can follow up and post it again in the comments but um <laughs> it, there's a vimeo video of the guy and he's doing his storytelling of uncle nearest as he's in the house 
Oh wow! Mm -hmm. It tastes a little younger than than eight years to me, though. I think the actor that he was in Westworld. Oh, <laughs> I think he was in Westworld. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> that guy. That did the narration. Yeah. Right. Oh, the narrator. I was like, Uncle Nearest. I don't think made it. No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was robot, like, is, so. is that a sci-fi movie? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> some time travel in there. They have some amazing. I don't know if you guys like cocktails, but they have some amazing cocktails on their website. And I was, I didn't realize the time, and I was about to go downstairs and make myself one because I have a ridiculous amount of alcohol downstairs. Um, <laughs> And, yeah. um, but yeah, they have, so if anyone likes some really creative, um, cocktails that are not anything that I've seen, so I'm gonna yeah. have to try, try a couple of things this week. When you're whipping up a cocktail, um, mm -hmm. what do you do when you're, when you're doing a whiskey cocktail? Um, what do you, what do you normally do? Oh, um, loaded question. Yeah. Yeah. What don't they? I'm on, what I've been on, do? I've been on three lately. <laughs> I've been my, my one lately, but, uh. For me, um, it's like mood dependent. Yeah, uh, I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, called rocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. I. I. It's I like agree. If I'm, if I'm stressed, I go Sazerac because it's delicious mm -hmm. and it's uh -huh. spicy, and I like it. If I'm feeling like I want to unwind a little, it's an old fashioned. I don't drink Manhattans, but there's also a bourbon renewal that elena yeah. makes that is just like if i'm in the mood to party that's i like will literally text elena and be like hey can you make me like a vat of this thank you what is that? <laughs> all right bourbon bourbon renewal come on what is it what is it what is it I don't yeah know it's, the recipe. It, it's just um bourbon cream de cassis uh lemon uh simple and i think bichard's uh angostura angostura bitters so um i yeah, that's that's my go go to. Um, so cream de cassis is a black currant um, liqueur, mm. and that's honestly what makes it for me. Uh, and Abby, we like it's it's bourbon and it has black currant. It's sweet, but it's still a little like a little sour. You know, kind of like our personalities. <laughs> um. I don't think anyone has ever described me as sweet, but thank you. <laughs> well, but maybe a little sour, sweet and a little sour. <laughs> That's fair. That's like fair. Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. At yes. first. <laughs> Dumping all the ice out of the ice machine and then making a pretty ice sculpture. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, that's and then an old fashioned or um, I've been into like just Amaro's like trying to mess with Amaro's and um, and bourbon together. Um, I do I actually do a gin. I I, lo I really love gin and I do um, a tequila. So paper planes, um, which is like uh, tequila. You can do it with bourbon, too. And um, Amar uh, Amaro. What is it? Amino uh, Anino. It's a ca cafe uh, amino, I think it is. Anyway, it's an amaro, and then two other ingredients. Or um, the other one is like I love gin, Saint Germain, mm. and cucumbers. Like that's during the summertime. That was mm. that was a pandemic cocktail over yeah. the summer. Was <laughs> was that you know? That's but, so refreshing. They really do. Have yeah. you had uh, the Highclere Castle gin? I have not had. All right. No, I so have are not. you? Do you doubt Nabby at all? Are you like the into the have you are you familiar with the Downton Nabby TV yeah, show? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the name of the castle is Highclere Castle, the actual castle. Mm -hmm. It's Highclere oh. Castle. Lady uh, Lord and Lady Carnarvon yes. uh live there. And uh, they teamed up with Adam von Adam von Gutkin. Adam von Gutkin. He's yes. uh, he's just what he, a name. He's yeah, right? just he's just from he's just a cat from uh, Connecticut. Though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but he knows. <laughs> and uh, he launched this brand, and he 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 partnered with Lord and Lady Carnarvon, and they released uh, Highclere Castle Gin. Mm -hmm. It is astounding. Mm -hmm. It's in really? the bottle itself is just magnificent. And I, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, this lavender, beautiful bottle. Ooh. You want it on your bar just because yeah. it's good. Oh. And then the Ooh. gin itself, uh, I, you know, I don't, uh, uh, drinking gin just uh, straight um, isn't yeah. always a thing with most gins. This one, unbelievable. Yeah. Even, just, uh, even by itself. And yep. we, we always try something neat first. And that yeah. just mm -hmm. by itself, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think I added anything to the what I actually was drinking on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, I didn't add That's anything. impressive. I didn't so, make anything with it. Yeah. So it's uh if you're looking, if you if you see it, a blue, a nice blue bottle, uh it's a high clear castle. It's worth it's worth it's worth the adventure. Absolutely. It's worth the adventure. Matt, what uh, cocktail are you on most recently? Are you or are you just you're you 
usually do it just straight in rocks, right? You know, when I want to get frisky uh, with yeah. whiskey. God, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping that, in. Heard that yeah, before. Right? <laughs> I usually grab these little sound bites and I'll play yeah. things like right before the opening. That might be That's the one there. Be the one. <laughs> yep. I hope that lives on for months and months. <laughs> so during the uh, during the COVIDian timeline that we're all living in right now, um, I actually had I like, gravi- I had been like gravitating towards that that best New York sour that we made, and you know it's you know it's your mm. oh it's so good and you add the red wine on top of it and you get such mm. a beautiful layer of the red and the sour itself. It is incredible. That that's where I was gravitating towards over the summer. You but guys are going to need to send us that recipe because I want that. Absolutely, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. the cheap side of me is all about the Crown Royal Apple and Verners. Oh, that oh, <laughs> I can't. Are you I, kidding? I, I can't do. I can't do the Crown Royal flavors. Yeah, I can't. No. I just. I no. I just. <laughs> oh, Abby almost yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the cheap side of me. Where I just want something simple and easy and uh, something sweet. That's where I'll go. Well, I mean, there's simple and easy and taste good out there, but that doesn't seem to be what you're about. No. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard. Did we mention we're novices? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've heard the peach. I, so I'll drink Crown Royal or I'll even drink J- Jack Daniels. Um, and uh, but like I the the flavored ones can just be too much. Uh, you know, if you had a simple syrup that just tastes like they they just, it's just like fake. That's what. But I've heard their peach one is not. I don't like the apple one, but I've heard their peach Crown Royal is not that terrible. So. Yeah. Something whiskey be shouldn't be sticky. That's my thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Very fair. Crown like apple, a- anything flavor, any flavored whiskey, if it's sticky, don't drink it. Like yeah. your whiskey shouldn't be sticky. It should evaporate. It's alcohol. That's a, like- it, Yeah. So speaking of evaporation, when you guys are doing your tastings, um, do mm-hmm. you guys do like the, the hand clap and any of that business? Do you know what that's all about? Yeah. I've I've seen it with uh, I think it's like Freddie Johnson. Does, he's big about that in his tours. But mm-hmm. we are pretty um, pure to when it comes saying. to our um, pure. I think is what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we, yeah. we just you know smell it, taste yeah. it. Everybody's gonna have something different, so we encourage everyone to like voice what they get because you know taste is based on experience so so the thing is if you put it in your hands right because it's it's uh you know if you look at a, a glass and it's got the legs right and and how mm-hmm. the residue on the side and that's all the oils so if you put a little shot in your head just a, a couple of drops in your hands and then you you rub it uh what it does is evaporates out the alcohol mm-hmm. and what you're you left the with is the oils so it's mm-hmm. like using hand sanitizer. It's like using hand sanitizer. I was like, that smells like 2020 in my hands. <laughs> that's what I've been pretty much yeah. doing the whole time. And then and then the friction warms it up a little bit and brings out Nuts. different aromas yeah. in the in the you get more so of a feel out of it. When I do that, it always reminds me it, we were um we had been served heavily the night before, and then we went to a tour at Maker's Mark in Kentucky. <laughs> And I was standing in front of the mash tub and they're like, well, just stick your hand in there and taste it. So every time I'm doing the hand rub thing and like I'm smelling it, I'm like, I literally just feel like I stuck my hand in the mash tub at Maker's like that's all I'm smelling. But it's the grains and you get like yeah. the pure smells. But I don't know, for some reason, that memory just really sticks out. And then yeah. they're like, taste it. And so naturally, I taste it. I was like, I regret this immediately. Uh, <laughs> I, I, smell I regret more the, all my decisions. I smell more of the grains in, in the, the grassy tone, the earthy tone mm-hmm. when I do that. All right. Um, Some of the wood uh, peeking forward. Uh, ladies, uh, you, the ladies aren't helping you out. Sarah says, the pe- <laughs> peach oh, crown yeah. is so <laughs> Okay, Sarah, you got to put a dinner together for us. So <laughs> yes. Is that a friend well, of yours? Yes, yes, that right yeah, is. Uh, okay. uh, bummer. All right. <laughs> I'm it's not a, hating on it. I'm well, just saying uh, it shouldn't well, be yeah. sticky, but it is, and it's a thing. So, man, I, we uh, it's, it's 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 we keep meeting people, yes. and it's like, oh my god, now we got a party in St. Louis. Well, I want to party with yeah. you. Baby. So we got to get a we we're, we're, we're it's gonna be a summer. We're gonna get an RV, and we're gonna travel the country. <laughs> gonna hang out I'm with all- the Kentucky Bourbon Boys. Yep. We're gonna hang out with uh, Beth Underwood, talk bourbon to me. Yep. And we're gonna go to St. Louis. We're gonna yes. mess with you guys. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm all about that RV life, so uh, I can I can I'm appreciate it. 
Helena but lived in a camper van for three weeks this summer, and I just don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what did what was the biggest thing you didn't understand about it? The no no running water. <laughs> <It's very full. laughs> like, like, like the chair is full. like the she said something about like the door. It would open up and it like turned. You could use it as a shower. I'm like that. That no. <laughs> well, and I honestly, my so the the really funny part about this is the girlfriend of mine that went with me, Sam. Before we went, so I've traveled all over the world, and so like um, <laughs> they, <laughs> yes, we do, Sarah. You're awesome. Um, so Sam. I've traveled all over. I've been in third world countries. I've dealt with no running water. I've literally showered underneath a pipe that came from a waterfall in like the Philippines. So like my requirements are really low, <laughs> but my friend Sam who went with me, I was like, have I actually, it wasn't me. It was, it was my boyfriend at the time had said, has Sam ever went camping? And I was like, Oh, I don't know. Let me, let me ask her. And so well, I asked the, the camper van. The thing is, the thing about it is that I don't get is they were going hiking in a Zion national park for three weeks and mm. decided that living in a van in the park without running water was like somehow going to be okay with like the stink from 40 miles of hiking. And I'm like, well, no. it, and so I'm actually really proud of her because we like, I, I, so we didn't, we made some minimal plans, some places we didn't even know we were going to stay at. And we would like break into old campsites, like break into old campsites and like shower in the old campsites because we knew we could get in there. Cause we had like a pass from the day before. Um, but I was really proud of her like three weeks. And I, I, but when we got to that hotel in Vegas and it was like a suite with like a balcony, we were like, we thought we were millionaires. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> we came in, we're both like wearing robes and just showered with our hair up. We we're like, we're ready for this life. Like that know, makes weeks. it so much better. It, it does. Clean. It does. But I you know. guys learned nothing from Chris Farley living in a van oh, down, down by, by the, the river. river. Oh, yeah, uh... it, it, it felt more like trains, planes and automobiles than it did that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, but yeah, I know it was good. It was a good you guys time. Should. I should rent an RV, travel the world, come yeah, see it. Let's do a let's do a bourbon RV tour. I was thinking about I saw today a, a, a mini school bus and I was like, ooh, maybe I should buy that and like rehab it and just travel. <laughs> That's a tiny house in a school bus. You could do it. You Why not? So yeah, our some friends of ours. They have a, I think they're the Kentucky Bourbon Boys, and they mm -hmm. do curated tours of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, and they they mm -hmm. have they have a they have a whole fleet of uh, little buses that they they shuttle people around in, and that's that's one of our our, our if the world is open wish lists. Uh, next is uh, we're gonna head down yeah. and have a little party with our Kentucky Bourbon Boy yeah. friends. Absolutely, yeah. you should. Yeah. They cover yeah. the, they they entire all three I believe three sections of the yeah. Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Yeah. So if you want to go north, you know, or the middle or the south um you kind of pick the distillers you want to go to and they will drive you to that destination that is so important uh, absolutely uh, mm -hmm. but you can't really do more than three distilleries in a yeah. day they, they <laughs> but, said at that point it's just um you're just a mess yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, and that's and that's with a heavy lunch in between those yeah. and so yeah. we we've got a, a friend that does um um she does the tennessee bourbon trail right or Tennessee Whiskey Trail. Um, oh, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's she, the executive director at the Tennessee Distillers Guild. So, so she, there's a Tennessee uh, mm -hmm. Whiskey Trail. Yeah. See, look, I we're think, learning something. I we think Tennessee learned. even has, it might be one of the states with like the most craft distilleries in uh, the yeah. state. Uh, actually, I actually, I think Michigan might be. Really? Michigan, okay. Yeah, we have like a huh. stupid there. I because I was just there was an article that we we're gonna touch on in one of the upcoming episodes. Yeah. Is that Michigan? It's in the top. So I, I bet okay. you I would imagine Tennessee is, um, it's it's booming in Michigan. There's just a crap ton of them here. All the, and, the uh, micro distilleries that are popping up everywhere. Too. Yeah. 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 There's so a lot. I got a quick question for you, ladies. Okay. Uh, yeah. Regarding events and tents, regard because we're, we're talking about camping, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So which tent is best used for parties or receptions? Pup. Is this oh, like an open answer? Or do I, I get? I'm not, is I'm it a choice or? Well, there's a dome tent, a pup tent, oh. or a frame tent. <laughs> which tent is best used for parties or receptions? Elena, oh. if you get this wrong, oh, you're my God. really upset. 
Well, I'm not usually the one to order the tents. So um <laughs> She's like, I have people for this. <laughs> <laughs> um oh my gosh. I'm just standing back and making sure it's fabulous. Right. Man. That's, uh, that's right. I <laughs> dome so pup or tent or uh, dome pup or frame. Sam, do you want? I feel like frame tent. I, I, I was gonna say frame too. Does, don't um, you have to have a frame? Is that right? Yeah. Well, hey, I don't. Hey, 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 I, 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 was gonna, I was. I was gonna say one thing. I did learn is don't put a clear tent anywhere in Florida because there was a couple that wanted like a clear tent in Florida, and it essentially is like when you go inside, um, like a greenhouse. Oh, and so, and yes, it was. Oh. It was just hot and humid and inside. Also, if you're going to rent a tent rent and it's cold outside mm -hmm. um don't don't not splurge on heaters through the tent rental company if they can put the heaters inside the tent for you versus thinking you can do it on your own and run the electric so don't <laughs> right. just go ahead and pay for the i don't care if it's an extra two thousand dollars it will be worth it i have a question before we get to this point of the conversation why the f do you want a tent outside in the winter there's so many restaurants here in Michigan putting up tents and it's like, yeah, because like indoor dining is banned. I know. Oh, it, sorry, indoor just... outdoor dining, <laughs> putting the indoor in the tent. So like and I, I, those, those little igloos, those oh, little yeah. igloo things, it's like, all right. So, so you, you party of four, just a, a party of four goes in there, has dinner. They leave. Are they, are they total ozone cleaning that thing or something? I, I know. The so. next party. I lived in Alaska sitting in an igloo was not fun. I'm just, no, no I just, well, these aren't real igloos. I think they're plastic bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. It just but, seems look, like it would be even worse than being in the restaurant itself. And, right. Because the you know. air would be more open inside, especially if a restaurant that has like, um, like 99% HEPA filters that are like filtering the air better, <laughs> as good as a hospital's doing, but yet you're going to have to put a tent on the outside and you're sitting in the inside of a tent right. in an igloo. You know, it just, I, no they're sense. making, they're making it so hard for restaurant owners, like on a total uh, side note, like uh, it's, it's why, and they're like, and uh, like the news is like picking up these articles, like, oh, this restaurant owner is going against, you know, the, the city and blah, well, why you, that's their livelihood. Why wouldn't you go against the city? Like there, what happens, you know, there's a large restaurant tour owner here in the Detroit metro area that yeah. was trying to get other owners of restaurants to band together to say, you can't mm -hmm. shut us down. They, they want to, yeah. they want to, yeah, that they was happening just, here too. Open up regardless uh, of the orters. Uh, yeah. they, you know, yeah. we're, we're just going to usurp the orders and just just do it. Mm -hmm. And once well, like, well, OK, you know, health department comes in and the fire marshal comes in <laughs> right. and, and you got a whole nother parade of problems. Right. right. Are, I love you guys seeing, oh, sorry. Are you, guys seeing, are you guys seeing the tents uh, popping up around St. Louis? Is that, yeah. a big, is that a big deal around? you? Yeah, guys it's been more in the county because the county. So like the city and the county of St. Louis are separate entities. Um, and the city has a capacity limit on restaurants and bars right now. And then um, the county shut down indoor dining. So out in the county where they shut down indoor dining, everyone is putting up tents with walls outside and calling it outdoor dining. Man. Even though you're still yeah. in, inside uh, a tent. Did, did I say COVIDian timeline <laughs> the earlier? COVIDian timeline. Yes, this yeah. COVIDian Wild. Timeline. And what's so funny, though, is that these igloo bars were popping up all over the country before COVID, like the last three winters, rooftops were having igloo bars. And I was like, that's actually kind of cool because they could be warm and you'd be outside looking at the stars. But now it's like, let's bring back the igloos and just say they're <laughs> outdoor dining. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> well, Michigan is kind of a crapshoot weather wise. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, wait, wait 10 minutes the weather will change, you know, yes. winter, winter in the morning, you know, spring in the, in the summer in the afternoon. Sweater weather. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so, I mean, the, the igloos had, had been a thing, um, around here as well. And, but now it's just, it's really prolific. And I just, I have no desire to, to, to sit in that. I got, no, I got a 200, no. 200 year old house to sit in. I don't have to sit in that. <laughs> and a hot tub. And so. a hot tub. <laughs> well, the hot tub would win every time. I'm yeah. telling you, I might be, uh, having a yeah. cigar in the hot tub tonight. So w which one of you work with nonprofits and such? Both of us, technically. Both of oh, fantastic. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there's actually a nonprofit for the nearest Green Foundation. Oh, Are you aware of that? I read oh. a little bit about it. Are yeah. you reading it right now? Tell us more. 
Well, it's a it's a nonprofit organization which is dedicated to the Greens legacy. The foundation has mm -hmm. actually has a lot of uh, projects underway presently, um, like a scholarship program and uh, that seeks help for Greens descendants through college and fully paid scholarships. On top of that, so yeah, the, the they whole, did that. Yeah, uh, the whole thing is just trying to give back the best way you can. You know mm -hmm. what? They yeah. fantastic whiskey, and, and it's it's amazing to drink on. But what does the company do? To give back yeah i don't know oh well uh, they have a nonprofit. no okay for fully paid scholarships bud Come education on. is big for them yeah <laughs> they've been partnering up with a ton of universities and building out scholarship programs last few years mm -hmm. so they're doing yeah, good I just work. that nonprofit work because what i do is free for my clients because i don't get they, they don't pay me anything well so. i mean you and abby are kind of kindred spirits when it comes to that too because abby's all about the numbers uh as well right mm -hmm. so Hey, you're about numbers and efficiency. Is that uh, yeah? What, what's that? What, I try to be. What, um, what, is, what is what is the what's the nine to five for you? It's by title. It is a senior financial analyst. So what I do day to day is I'm actually working on compensation right now. So our company has. I've been working Bonus on compensation plans. for a while too, but well, it's, too. Too. it's called I keep end. Telling oh, them, it's so I keep time, telling them so. I need to be paid more, but it's just not <laughs> landing yet. So we'll get there. Um, no, but basically I look at the company, how we're playing, paying our employees and if it's incentivizing the employees to do right by the company in terms of commission and bonus plans, things like that. So because kind of Matt Matt over here is he does uh he's a banker by trade right. and does uh, financial wellness yeah, stuff so. and just oh, uh, nice. coaches people through you know being smart with their money. Yeah, you know, financial, you know, financial wellness is important and it's those daily habits in your spending lives that you have. Got to save money you, for bourbon. If you don't, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a budget you're not sticking to, it's going to bite you in the ass, you know, at, at one point. So, mm -hmm. just be yep. fiscally responsible. Um, and you can't depend on that bonus of compensation because it may not be there. And that's what we try to prepare folks for is the inevitable of changing jobs, losing your job, having mm -hmm. that six months of emergency savings. Right, so, right. Mm -hmm. So credit res credit reports, scores, all that fun stuff. I, lo I love it's that. It's hard now, too. Yeah. yeah. Any, anybody yeah. Who, uh, who, who told you where they would be in five years, five years ago was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Not a single person was right. Yeah. Nobody. No. I wasn't going to take a forbearance on my mortgage, but here we are. Could have guessed that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild, wicked world uh, mm -hmm. out there. But uh, bourbons and bourbon, bourbon and blondes. Uh, what's what, yeah. where are you guys going? What's uh, what's the what's the long term plan for the bourbon and blondes? Question of the year, to be honest. Yeah. We yeah. were literally just talking about that earlier. Matt too, and I have this, the same struggle <laughs> conversation. Go. Well, well, we, so I was just talking to my financial advisor, speaking of finance, um, mm -hmm. my financial advisors earlier this afternoon and just talking about business planning for 2021 and where we want to see it to go, you know, because originally, um, if I'm being honest, like originally when we went into this year, we wanted to do big events, big, in yep. per let me say big in-person events. Right. Like, and yeah. we wanted to MC events. We wanted to help build them out. Um, whether yeah, they were execute them, right. Whether they were mm -hmm. bourbon events or even like women focused, like business events as well. Yep. And so we had like these grand scheme of, you know, these large events that we want. And that's where we kind of wanted to start. And then like, dip our toe in the water and see where that led mm -hmm. but we've done virtual events and now we're leading into doing corporate um events and it's it's all been great it's just like a interesting pivot from what you imagined mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. i think next year so we're doing we were selling merchandise too which we can drop the link in into that as well so we started selling merchandise we're still doing events um and i think we're just i mean we're going to talk about this over the next couple of weeks. So I'll throw out a couple of things. Abby can yeah, throw out a couple of things. ideas. Yeah. <laughs> there is like literally nothing <laughs> like, there's nothing like trying to start a business plan and being in your second year of starting this business plan with the podcast and events and having absolutely nothing look the same. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I have no idea what a wedding is going to look like in, in yeah. five months from now, yeah. four months from now. I, yeah. Are like, we going to have a big in person events like Elaine can, and I want to do? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the, the halls. Like it, there, we in Detroit, we have some just 
phenomenal events. Yeah, event spaces. Yeah, you know, yeah. Detroit Zoo. They have like you know, get your ass drunk at the zoo. It's not what they call it, but it's what it is. <laughs> they're called wild nights at the zoo. So oh, it's somewhat yeah, fitting. that's what it is. That's what. It is. She, you're you're a Michiganian. What's what's wrong with you? Oh no, it's no, they're fabulous. And then it's uh, my other show is called Animal Talk, and we've yeah. had Ron Kagan, the director of the zoo, on several times. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's uh, we yeah, I know that, but uh, but they're fabulous events, but they're big events. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's the two largest uh, the two largest attractions in Michigan are Henry Ford Greenfield Village yep. and the Detroit Zoo, and yep. they and they and they 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 waver back and forth between you know oh I had two point one million visitors, <laughs> yeah I had two point two million visitors you know annually, and it's like they're they're big they're big events, and, and th- th- those things aren't happening anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't know, Lena. I like the idea of big events still. I where want them. I yeah. want them to come back. I did. Yeah, I, know the same. I had one wedding this uh, this past year that yeah. was on a uh, private property, so the the rules didn't apply on the private property. And I swear to God, thank God I was behind a DJ table <laughs> because I was six feet, twelve feet away from everybody, and it was just packed with two hundred free for all. Yeah. It oh, well, really what, was. once they start drinking, it's yeah. all like. Oh. Game yeah, over. It, yeah, it is game over. I mean, I, yeah, because I've been to a couple weddings this year, and it's it's the same. It's the yep. same thing, you know. I wasn't surprised that I got to play Dancing Queen, and it packed the dance floor. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you can play any piece of horse shit, and people are gonna dance because they're just desperate for fun. They're like, it's, we're the best thing dance. on the planet. It's like, oh god, there's music. Yeah, I'm dancing. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much my move right there, too. Uh, <laughs> really. We know where to find you on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right, we'll bourbon. Bur- whiskey's kicking in. Whiskey's kicking in. That's how it should be. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, but I... No, go ahead, please. Oh, I was going to say, so, I mean, I, I'm a big festival person. I love music festivals. So mm-hmm. I would love to see music festivals to come back and big events to come back, but... I, yeah, I don't know. I have tickets to an event in May uh, that's like a, I don't know, a, a 50,000 person. It's like the largest festival in St. Louis or in uh, in the United States, like uh, Electronic Daisy Carnival, EDC. Oh, sounds like fun. And yeah, no, it's it's a good time. If you like electric music, if you don't, then not so much. But um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, we, we can have a sidebar about all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, um, it's. It's not even just, I'm not going to lie. So I do love the music, but when I, when I went for the first time in 2019 and I had tickets to go in 2020, but the first time I went, I was like, I want to do stages for this. Like I want to do stages for burning man. I want to do stages for this, like for Coachella. Like I know it is just, it's just a whole like creative, amazing process. That's so amazing. I don't know. It's so cool. And then seeing everybody come together and yeah, but I don't know. I don't it originally like it's funny to think that last year this all happened in March and I thought this would get resolved by May. I was like, oh, this would <laughs> get resolved by May, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. and then it got pushed out to October. And then you're like, I think over the summer, you're like, I think actually uh, October could be reasonable. Uh, and now you're like, so 2025, right? Like, is that is that what the point we're at? We're at like, gonna make a business plan. You might as well put it five years out. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I mean, we'll get back. We'll get back to the big parties eventually. It, it might. Yes, it, it, yeah, 2021, it may not happen. There's still probably be small things. Yeah. yeah. Um, you like know, tw- but uh, yeah. but 2022 by 2022. Yep. Because our the national uh, health advisor was saying, you know, by the time they get this the antidote but the the vaccination Mm -hmm. not an antidote but the vaccination and get it out you know it it it, it will take the majority Mm -hmm. of of 2021 to get it out to everybody who is willing to take it um and then for you know that that be able creating the bubble for safeness uh should take most of 2021 but i I, so there's a light there's a light at the end of the tunnel We're, we're gonna get there and we'll get back to live music festival samantha uh, it's like music festivals. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sam Nork, she's uh, she's in the other room right there. There's Sam. Like, uh, there she nice. is. Wave hi. Hi, Sam. Yes. Hi. Sam Nork. You guys want to know Sam Nork. Sam Nork is uh, so. he's a kindred spirit a uh, with, with you because she's uh, she's a photographer. Um, oh, hell yeah. Awesome. Amazing photographer. And uh, she was uh, she was one of my students. Uh, I, like I said, I teach <laughs> high school. And uh, 
<laughs> so I take no credit for her talent or abilities, but she is, she well, is, at least you she know. is fabulous. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, yeah, she just, uh, what the, what was the David Arquette movie that just came out? The documentary? Yeah. You cannot kill David you cannot Arquette. Kill David Arquette. Do you, are you guys David Arquette fans? Do you like David Arquette? I, I, I'm familiar with David Arquette. I'm now no. curious about the movie. <laughs> he, he did some stuff about what is it, 15, 19 years ago, something like that. Was it wrestling? And he did, he did, he like kind of just kind of was like on a goof and like broke into some like pro wrestling and like stole somebody's belt. And it, it was like, and wrestling is like, you don't do that wrestling. There's protocols. No, and it will hurt like really, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was yeah, and, I was a huge wrestling fan as a child. That's a guilty. Like, if, if one fun fact about me, I used to, like, come down on my brother from the bunk bed and, like, elbow nice. slam him. Uh, nice. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're an you anchor. It makes so will. much more sense now. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I do. You got to feed know. your guilty pleasure, <laughs> and you got to look up David Arquette. David Ar Arquette cannot be killed. Uh, okay. you'll love it. But Samantha has a, a she's got a cinematography she, uh she, credit on it, right? Yeah, yeah, what is yeah. it? What's it? What's your title? Additional cinematography. Additional cinematography. Nice. Uh, cool. they shot Hell yeah, Detroit. girl. Yes. And uh and and then she was like, they they were like, All right, we need somebody to hold a sign. Here's Sam, go hold the sign. So she's got a <laughs> she's got a quick thing. She's got a cameo. Girl <laughs> in crowd with sign. So I love um, it. That's the There's IMPD so credit. Girl, girl in crowd with sign. So um, but she's like, she does like amazing photography too. She shot like Dane Cook, and she's like good friends with Blink 182. She's like, yeah, we need she won't drop names, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you seriously I, need to know this girl. She's astounding. And she's like, D -d 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 her birthday's on Thursday. Happy birthday, Samantha. Yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. She produces My our show. So I'm gushing over Sam because she's like, she's 21, going on 22. And she's a phenomenal human being, and, and people don't tell her that enough. So uh, she's like a pretty awesome kid. So you're awesome, Sam. You'll have to connect with me. I've got a, a guy that does um, photography for bands. That's it's my like pretty much like my aunt's son, and he's absolutely amazing. And um, I'm also a December birthday. My birthday was on Friday. So happy hey, early happy birthday. birthday. I, I love birthdays. birthdays. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So uh, <laughs> Sam is is Sam is rocking.com. Yeah. Sam is rocking.com. She's Hell like, yeah. Her, her artwork is a, you, no, seriously. I'll, I'll send you I love it. Because yeah, send you know, it. Check it out. Um, all right. Enough gushing about Sam. All right, Sam, back to <laughs> your, your corner. Get your, get your corner. That's enough love for you, Samantha. <laughs> but, no, you, Samantha. It, but we were talking about music festivals because Sam is like all about the live music. And so am I. Because mm -hmm. Matt and I being DJs, okay. right. uh, we love the live music and we, we hey. God, I just can't wait for it to happen. I know mm -hmm. it will. We'll get through all this horse crap. Do you know what I miss? What do you miss? I miss eating a freaking turkey leg. Not drinking. <laughs> oh, preach. I love oh, turkey legs. I want my Renaissance Festival back. Do you guys That's have like a I Renaissance have. Festival, medieval festival out by you guys there in St. Louis? Do we? We 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 do have a Renaissance Festival out in Winsville here, but right. um I was we referencing a bar that yes, makes turkey a... legs regularly and uh, Watching oh, Elena eat it, watching Elena eat this turkey leg is somewhat uncomfortable, <laughs> if, but also if, impressive. If I can find the photo of me eating the turkey leg, I will send it. I will post it to the bottom of the video <laughs> for you guys. Hilarious. Yes, it is. It's good stuff. But no, uh, Midwestern is one of our favorite bars in St. Louis. So if anyone um, is listening from St. Louis or you guys go to St. Louis, it is. Um, they took it off the menu, but they put it back on the menu, and it is. So good, so so good. It's stupid. It really is. Oh, they do turkey legs at the bar. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I okay. just uh, we, we, again the RV. We're going. We need. Yeah. To talk to them, we need to talk to some people up here. <laughs> <laughs> I just the want bar? a turkey leg in one hand and an axe in the other, and throwing an axe blindly. At oh a Jesus, target. Mary Joseph. That's what well. I actually, thought. maybe just stick we, to the turkey leg. <laughs> we can make we can make that happen for oh, you because we have an axe throwing place here and you can bring your own food and alcohol in and we can just get you a turkey leg. We can you bring your own bourbon in and then you can throw axes and those little Chinese star thingy nunchuck. Oh. I don't know whatever they are, but you can throw those. You can throw those as well there. Like an axe. I'm smelling yeah. a new business plan. I just I, I think uh yeah, I think uh Ferndale needs a uh, has a new uh Fashionable Ferndale needs axe throwing and turkey legs. That's yeah. what it needs. Yes. Ferndale's our hipster spot here. That would be the place for it. <laughs> Holy smokes. You know, um, this has been a blast. Yeah. Yes. It's been an absolute riot. You guys are great. Yeah, you guys are awesome. I just, uh, well, we're going we're gonna to hang out. So if you guys ever, uh, you know, just want to just have some random shenanigans, 
uh, you know, give us a holler. We'll, we'll do we'll do a tasting of something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah. we gotta we gotta hang out. We gotta hang out some more. You guys were right. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, absolutely. Uh, Anytime you come to St. Louis in the RV, just toot toot. We'll go by the river. We'll get some turkey legs, some toot, nunchucks. Toot, really? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nunchuck. Holy shit. All right. So where do where do people find uh, all your stuff? Uh, at bourbon and blondes on Instagram, at bourbon and blondes on Facebook, uh, uh, bourbon and blondes.com, and then anywhere you can find a podcast. Fair play. All right, bourbon and blondes. Yes, so yeah, Abby Elena, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for thank you guys uh, playing in the Randy games. We appreciate you, <laughs> and uh, yes, we will be talking again soon. Yeah, don't yes. go anywhere, but we'll we'll be talking soon enough. All right, Perfect. everybody. Cheers! One last time. Cheers! Cheers, everyone! Oh, no, cheers. it's empty, but I'll cheers anyway. Cheers! All right. <laughs> All right. Clink. All right. Clink.